to hear her story, but also her story. You're going to learn a lot of uh, from her story and experience in the past. Uh, but she is now uh, moving in the apostolic uh, ministry and touching many lives all over the world. So without any further ado, Apostle Jill, thank you so much. Hi, Adnan. Good to have good to be here with you today. I'm so excited. Absolutely. Take a moment, and introduce yourself. I think I just scratched the surface right there a little bit about you. Um, well, I'm um, actually God had commissioned me as an apostle. Um, actually, I do evangelism, um, health, uh, health coaching, um, as well as uh, mentoring women, uh, deliverance ministry for 25 years, um, inner healing. So really, that was all about my testimony and my life. Um, my heart is always about the harvest. So preparing a people and holiness uh, and health and healing, you know, for the harvest. And so that's been my mission and mandate. Um, actually been a Christian for 30 years now. So I'm excited about being a part of the kingdom and training and equipping the saints and preparing them for the end time harvest. Very, very crucial. I appreciate it, uh, you know, for your heart for the kingdom. It's very much needed right now, uh, the harvest and going out and reaching out to people. But you have a phenomenal, I want to start with your uh, first of all story. You have a phenomenal story that you can uh, lead us into your testimony to be specific what I'm talking about here. So here over to you, Jill. Um, yes, back in 2017, I was diagnosed with cancer. Now I already had been healed of lupus and fibromyalgia um, and God supernaturally and naturally healed me through the power of God and the power of nature and brought me into a new level of glory for uh, inner healing and deliverance through the wisdom and revelation that I had received uh, back from 2000 to 2007. He um, called me out in 2008 into full-time ministry as well as a business with health and healing, coaching people, spirit, soul, and body to walk in wholeness and holiness, purity, and power, to walk in a revival and awakening and unity and oneness, you know, with the bridegroom king. My heart has always been about the bride and bridegroom, but also to be a warrior, to overcome, to take territory and ground and to resist the enemy, but also to bring deliverance to the people. So that was a part of my testimony from being saved uh, in 1994. I was on a journey of, uh, of really discovering who I was and my identity, um, true intimacy with God, authority that um, he was going to show me I'd be carrying, and the ultimate destiny that was on my life. Well, 2017 came, and uh, I was diagnosed with cancer, which to my surprise, eating healthy, um, doing deliverance and healing, already been free of generational curses, infirmity, sickness, and disease. Um, but now I have cancer. Well, it was a first if, a fearful place, but I had trust in God uh, through my history with the Lord of all the battles that um, I had overcome. And it's his faithfulness, his goodness, his glory, and just intimacy with him. Well, I knew it was time to be consecrated unto the Lord again to... Um, begin to ask the questions. And in 2017, he began to show me, um, he began to show me the new mantle um, and the new heart of holiness he was bringing to his people, that I would be a forerunner and a pioneer um, of love and of the fear of the Lord. And so in the nine months I ascended and descended into the Holy of Holies, um, breaking through that fear barrier, the, the ancient spirits of uh, demonic forces that were trying to hold me back from greater revelation of his love, intimacy, and really getting prepared with a new identity and a new wineskin and the authority I would carry um, that my heart was always for to see the fullness of people getting deliverance, not just a process, but to actually be like even as Jesus was to the demoniac and to people he healed, it was an instant healing, it was a fullness. My heart was always for that. But he told me that he would be bringing me into the epic destiny of what I was born to do and the fullness of the ministry, the fullness of intimacy and really coming to full brideship and sonship. Well, that wasn't given at first the revelation, but throughout the nine months, um, he began to show me he allowed it to happen. And it, it was like a Job story. He allowed me to really go through a purging process, a refining process, and also even to get new wisdom and revelation regarding these ancient demons and how to fight through the glory realm how to fight through worship, through prayer, uh, through fasting, did many 21-day fasts. This was a, um, a war 
for my for my destiny, for my legacy, and for the generations to come. Wow, that's uh, good. I, I was like, keep going, Jill. That's okay. it. Um, this is, I think, what I wanted exactly people to know. So uh, before you start again, I want people to continue to share this broadcast on your Facebook timeline and type your comments right below this video because at the end of this broadcast, I want Apostle Jill to pray for you. Okay, go. Yeah, and so um, there was many times I ascended in the Holy of Holies. This was 2017 before really anyone was speaking about it or the angelic realm and how to partner with angels, but the Holy Ghost, <laughs> the Holy Ghost, uh, was teaching me. I was in the presence of the Father um, and his the fear of the Lord. Uh, it's a terror of the Lord and the fear of the Lord. But in the fear of the Lord, you find the love of God. You find the greatness and the mercy of God, the compassion, the loving kindness, but also you find the holiness of God. And then when I was in that place, I remember just uh, feeling like my skin was coming off. And I lived a holy life, um, not outwardly, again, outwardly, yet yeah, in my actions, my behaviors, my attitudes, but it was still the holiness of God that would expose every little sin and us being sinners. And I, it, God revealed to me my own encounters, my epiphanies, uh, as Isaiah 6, um, I would be in that place and he would be preparing me for the nations. He would be preparing my mouth, my heart. Now again, it was already living a life of consecration, going through many journeys of glory to glory, faith to faith. But this would be the ultimate destiny of he desired me to have Abba's heart. And he's doing that right now. The holiness of the remnant's heart. Father's holy. His heart is holy. Jesus is holy. His heart's holy. And the Holy Spirit, <laughs> that the Holy Spirit without having a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, you can't walk in the fullness of the holiness that he desires for us. He's desiring to sanctify us, that we would consecrate ourselves into our hearts to be one mind, one heart, and one body with him and with one another. It's a oneness that it's so deep and intimate that your thoughts, your words, your actions, your behaviors and attitudes all come in alignment with holiness. Now, we're not perfect, and we wonder how can we obtain this holiness that Abba, Abba Father has in his heart and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. This is where we're going to start seeing miracles. We're going to start seeing signs and wonders because in this holiness of heart, as I ascended, I saw the uh, Holy of Holies, the throne room, and I was watching a commissioning in 2019 as I ascended, but the Lord said, this is what you had came into in 2018. So I actually got to see it play out, even though I had encountered it, um, but I didn't have the full picture yet. And he showed me that the nations were aligned in this throne and he was the ancient of days sitting on the throne. And I saw him from the, from the, from the shoulders down and even his body just would reverberate. But it was a joyful celebration <laughs> It was a commissioning of the ancient mantle that his uh, remnant would carry because they'd gone through the fire of holiness. They'd gone through the fire of consecration and obedience, submission, surrender, yieldness, repentance, until they had an enlarged heart. He was more concerned for the heart than he was the mantle because now he, they were going to get his heart, heart of mercy heart of grace, a heart to bless, to bless those that curse them, pray for those who despitefully use them. And that blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. It was the attitude of the Beatitudes. It was the mind of God, the thoughts of God, of Jesus. All of them became a Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They became one. And they were all lined up. The nations were lined up. It was endless but they had passed the test coming through the fire of character of the holiness of the purity of the righteousness the justice the mercy of god that they went through a process of giving him even years their heart now coming into the fullness of abba's heart and he's he showed me in the holy of holies as i'm watching 
that the sounds of heaven, it was a celebration that every, every frequency, every atom, every cell in the throne room was filled with sound and filled with song, songs of the remnant, but everyone sang a different song unto him, but it became the, it became the same sound, one sound. And it was, um, and it was such a celebration, a commissioning of the holiness of God. But it also was the ancient mantle of the ancients of the Old Testament, the ancients of the New Testament. He said, these are those that um, actually gave the portals, the ancient portals, ancient gates, ancient altars, ancient wells. It was in them. There was a place of the king of glory now coming into their body because they had the root systems uprooted, overthrown, destroyed. Now he was becoming one in them. And as I'm watching this happen, it was just flooring me of the revelation that had happened to me. But I was celebrating that all of a sudden, um, he again gets up from the throne and all of a sudden I see in his hand, it looked like a scepter. And then he had me moving, like zooming in, he zoomed me in. And then all of a sudden it was a, a brandy iron. And it was really kind of modest branding iron, like it was rough looking, but it had four words on it. H or H O four letters, H O L Y. And each letter was burning separately with fire. And all of a sudden, then he would go to the, um, the person in white and they, he would brand their heart like this. Oh, holy. And the, they were marked holy holiness unto the Lord that no enemy could take them out. Now it was like an apostle Paul. It was like a Moses. It was like a, an ancient branding into the heart so deep that um, they had passed that they would fulfill destiny, the high and holy calling of God. And that this burning, I could see it in the heart. And then he went to each, each one himself. He commissioned them himself. And they, he said that now they will have my new heart. And I saw when he was showing a heart that was just cut and opened. And it was a, not a, a natural heart. It was supernatural. It was his heart that he was putting in them, marked holy, that they now have the heart of mercy, heart of loving kindness, grace, a heart, um, such this huge heart of justice. And every heart that he has was going into them. And it was Jesus' character. It was his heart of holiness. Like John 17, they became one. And it was so beautiful that now their heart was cleaned out of everything that they had gone through. Maybe the offense, bitterness, anger, resentment, jealousy, envy, strife. Um, and even where the enemy had brought witchcraft in people's hearts, you know, whatever the enemy had done. Like these things are gone. And this marking made them holy and commissioned them and the earth as ancient. And as I seen the ancient marking, it was as if God's saying, they're mine. No one can, the enemy can't have them. No matter what he tries to do, even Apostle Paul, we see all that he went through and he couldn't go out until that time. He told me that these would restore the ancient foundations of Isaiah 58, that these ancient foundations would be stored through the ancient people, the ancient remnant. They would carry ancient portals, ancient wells, ancient altars. Um, they would carry the ancient paths. But there is a remnant going through right now. The enemy's trying to hinder this new heart. And he wants to bring a heart of flesh, a heart of mercy. And I said, Lord, and I looked at the Lord and I said, he had brought me through fasting and prayer during that time. And he said, "What? I'm going to give you new hearts for your assignment. You can, I said, Lord, I want all of your heart. And I cried out for all of his heart. He said, you can't have all of my heart. You would blow up. <laughs> he said, I'm going to give you your heart, new heart alignment for a new assignment. I'll give you a heart of compassion that you will have confidence. You will have courage. You will have my love. You will have the fear of the Lord. You will give me glory in that assignment because you have a new heart now that I, I killed you. I almost, you almost died to the point you died to get me and my new skin, my new wine skin, the new mind skin is Jesus.
wow. and his holiness and character. It's not just trans. It's not just uh, transitioning. Yes, you're transitioning. Like the world says, you transition a man and woman. I'm transitioning into the Father. I'm transitioning into Jesus and Holy Ghost in me and in intimacy with them. And then I'm transforming into the image and likeness of my Abba, my Daddy, to have my the attitudes, thoughts, words, and actions that line up with Him. And for my purpose of where I'm going. So he gave me three new hearts. And my heart, actually, I felt like I was having a heart attack. And I went, oh. And uh, and for three months, my heart was hurting. But God said, don't be afraid. Because I'm doing a finished work. Because you have the mantle, you overcame. But now i got to give you the heart that's enlarged to carry the weight of my glory. He said, I want to even restore your body. Because my bones from cancer, my areas, everything was... Um, Everything was destroyed. I was deformed, but I had been healed of cancer. So he was going to reform my body. And he already brought me through the resurrection, but now he's going to restore my very body. So I had to do nutrition. I had to do health. I had to do exercise. So in other words, I had to, um, he reformed my body and recreated it. So I can carry this new heart, this new mantle of glory for my assignments with, um, with um, the attitude of the Beatitudes Again, I'm not perfect, but the work is be he did the work in me. Now I just have to maintain it by guarding my heart and um, just setting my face like a flint and not being distracted by the world, the news, and all. I pray for it all. But my holy calling, my purpose, because nations are connected to it, uh, even Arab nations that I minister to, and um, the brokenness of broken people that people can't get help. So I'm excited. Um, I'm not, I, I see some manifestations of it, but I know this is a season. It's been seven years now and I'm ready to blow up God's love and his mercy and grace and that revival, refreshing rivers flow, um, open heavens, portals, angels, that there's such a freedom of love, like heaven on earth, that culture. And that's what I want to bring through dancing, through worship, um, through the preaching of God's word, but loving people and bringing them into that mercy and that grace. And my story about mercy is that God gave me a new heart from some situations I'm still uh, dealing with and waiting for. So it's been about 12 years, but God gave me mercy for my enemies. He gave me mercy to enough that I would say, if they called me, I would say, I can help heal you because of mm -hmm. what I carry now. Come on. I can heal you and deliver you from the worst uh, spirits demons, whatever you're carrying that you're doing to other people to hurt them because of your insecurity, your pain. I'm here to bring you to the Father's heart. This is what you can receive and have because I don't want you to go to hell and I want you to receive your fullness of your destiny and why you're here. So God gave me that grace as he does. He's always rejected. He's always seems to be abandoned, right? Um, and people talking about him and, but he's still loving the people that are he says, forgive them for they not know what they're doing in his last breath. He continues to forgive and forget, but they have to repent and receive the mercy of God. And he's there 24 seven, no matter what people have done, what they've said, he's not in offense. He's not in bitterness or anger. Of course he can't, but it's that mercy that God's given us that new heart. It's a holy heart, but it's a merciful heart. And we have to know that there's, yes, there's boundaries. Yes. There's, um, um, you know, things we need to do, but the Lord says you pray for your enemies and you bless those that curse you. This is the real heart of the Beatitudes. And a lot of people want to be blessed, 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 you know, but blessed is when you're going to uh, get the heart of the Beatitudes. And then wow. I believe Dave has plural, large your heart first before you can large your territory. Absolutely. And Jill, I, I want to add into that. I love, I love about the heart, you know, posture being right. I mean, I've been preaching all over and, and 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 sharing that like if your heart is right with god everything's gonna fall in the right place right so it's about the heart if your heart is far away from god then it's gonna be very tough hallelujah hallelujah i'm glad you're speaking that and that's my heart for the body of christ his heart and a lot of times the heart's overlooked because the heart's intimate the heart is there's um surrendering you're yielding you have to let go of your pride and your ministry. Everything has to be given to him where you are, his heart is first and you're become that bride and he's your, Jesus is your husband. There's, there's such a, a, um, a reverence and there's such a fear of the Lord 
and a love of God that you protect that heart and you don't want ministry to get in the way, strife, offense to get in the way because you want to be able to see him. The pure in heart shall see God and I got to see him. I got to taste him. I got to touch him and I got to be one with him because we are made for love. We're, we are here for love and that love is what's going to uh, compel us and, um, and it's going to give us the compassion, the mercy to keep going and not give up. And not to fear man, because in the love of God is the fear of God. Come on. So I experienced the fear of the Lord, um, and um, I would not want to ever take His glory, because what I've seen and heard, I, I'm here, healed of cancer, healed of a seven-headed dragon that was attacking me, spirit of death, spirit of legion, um, spirit, all these spirits. I'm going to be writing my book, and my husband and I love one. My husband and I stayed in unity. The body of Christ that was in my, uh, like David and the mighty men stayed in unity and we kept loving and we kept moving and advancing forward to overcome in the love of God. Cause there was a lot of trauma and there's a lot of things blowing up every day, but you had to keep that place of love and unity and peace and honoring each other and gracing each other and forgiving each other through the whole process because a lot of things are said and done. <laughs> but I want to tell you, God's love won for me. My husband's love won for me. And uh, the body of Christ that came together for me. And we, we stayed together in unity of one heart and one mind. And the victory, whoo, glory. Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory. And he called me and he said, Jill, your new name is Victory. <laughs> and he said, um, he said, your name is victory. And thanks be unto God who gives me the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, I give you the keys of death, hell, and the grave now. In other words, a new level of authority. But because um, the victory, the Lord said that Jehovah Nisi, my name is victory. And you're going to bring victory to the body of Christ. You're going to bring hope and healing. And you're going to prepare and equip a people with the heart of God so they can carry the ancient mantle of God. And it's Abba's mantle. It's not no other man's mantle. I don't know what this looks like. I don't know what it's, how it's going to manifest, but I've seen it a little bit. And I keep on saying, Lord, I'm just going to go low with you. It's in me. I'm not striving for anything. It's already in me. He's going to manifest it by his grace, by his mercy, and by his love. Wonderful. And I just feel that the Lord is now releasing a mantle right on the earth and so many people could you talk about that you know on upon people and uh, god is doing something new and revival is coming yes and i believe that it starts again revival has to start with us yes we can't sustain revival if we're not revived so but god's reviving hearts a uh, refreshing hearts through our repentance our first love coming back to him and even greater love of value appreciation and honor you know, there's a level of honor that we have to honor the Lord. How we love him is obeying him and honoring his word, honoring his leaders, honoring his uh, communion. You know, we honor the things he's given us that are called holy and sacred. So there's a place of what's happening in us that is a group or a um, tribe or a movement come together as they worship him and spirit and in truth. And as they begin to walk in truth and begin to surrender and repent and die to self so they can live and actually be living on uh, not Christ. It's not I that live it, but Christ that live within me. So I saw an army actually that was raised up. It was an ancient army and I was across the seas and the oceans and he was having me on this ocean. I was actually hovering over ocean and he showed me and he was showing me and he was there. And he was showing me this army was on the ground, but then I saw movement and then they went back down. Then I saw movement again and then they went back down. And this happened like seven times. And he kept saying, watch, keep watching. And then I looked the eighth time, they kept getting higher and higher each time. And then the, the seventh time, they seemed like they were going to stand, but they went down again. And then the eighth time they stood up. And all of a sudden, I saw fire in their eyes. I saw their heart enlarged. I saw this, um, this uh, armor on them and mantle on them that I've never seen before in, in anything that we've seen. And all I can say is that it brought everyone in this march like a cadence. 
And it wasn't about them. It wasn't about ministry. It was about him. And they were the army of the Lord that had been prepared in the, um, in the fire of the Lord that he branded and commissioned. But now they're all in a cadence, thousands of them. And they were all in tune and timing and step. Like, I, I can't explain it, but like the China army, you'll see how they're just so face like a flint and they're walking. But this was even greater than that. It was supernatural. And they didn't really, they, their faces, they were unique to be different, but they were like, they were like Jesus. And they became Jesus, but it was, they're still their selves personality. And he said, this is what I'm looking for, for revival. I'm looking for um, them going through the fire and I, I'm going to manifest and demonstrate uh, my glory that even the glory is going to bring mass deliverance, mass healing because of what they carry. So it's not going to take years to cast out devils, heal the sick, but it was the glory realm coming to heal mental illness, deliver people from homosexuality. It was delivering people from cancer and addictions of these ancient root systems that no one could get out because we hadn't had the glory and the authority and the ancient that we pressed through, we uh, walked through and gone through to actually carry this higher realm to deliver people. And he said, I'm raising up a remnant that is crying out for holiness and purity and fulfillment of um, and fullness of his love, that they have no agendas but God. And they, that's that remnant being raised up right now, that all they want to be is in the glory of his presence. And they're going to move from the glory and manifest and demonstrate this revival and uh, deliverance and healing. And we're, God is going to have to mean, God will maintain it through the actual people that are carrying the revival. So it's not going to go like five months, eight months, because the people are prepared now. Mm -hmm. And there's leaders of glory that are apostles that are going to lead these glory movements. And they are fire. Yes. And be training and equipping the people with them with a fivefold ministry that those fivefold ministries actually carrying this mantle and remnant. But it's because of the heart. He said, my man, he said, the heart is greater than the mantle. As much as I seen this mantle, it's, I'm still unpacking it, but it's the heart that I always say, Lord, I'm safe just to be in your heart. I'm safe to stay humble. I'm safe to, to continue to love those that curse me or persecute me or jealous of me. I'm going to just, I want my heart to continue to be merciful. And that mantle won't leave me, but I want to operate and manifest. And how it operates and manifests is through the love of God, yes. through the holiness of God, through the purity. And we're going to see that. So that's, I believe, the, the like a formula, if you may say, for the revival to be released and then be maintained and sustained till he comes. Come on. That's Woo! I love it. Hallelujah. You got me excited right now. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I want to say thank you, Jill, for uh, being on this broadcast. And I was just enjoying it. I did not must, uh, uh, much interjected it because I was just really, I'm like, I'm just going to leave you alone and have you share this because this is very crucial right now, what was on your heart. And I think that this is very timely, the remnant, the revival, the 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 manifestation um this is phenomenal then you share your story i'm just so so thrilled i want to encourage people if you want to um hear more of jill you can uh go to her facebook jill jeniak is that correct your last name yes and i actually have a new youtube channel too called healing for all nations jill janik and my facebook yes jill janik uh check out the youtube as well and i'm telling you i want jill to continue to record these kind of programs. I'm going to talk to you, Jill, afterward on that because I'd really sense that God is taking you higher and deeper in him uh, to do the exploits for him and all over the world. Your your voice got to be hear, heard all over the nations and, and so many people that the land you will never set your foot on. Some lands you will. God is sending a donation, but some of the lands that you will never set your foot on so your voice can be heard there as well. So thank you so much for those who are watching right now. Uh, make sure you share this broadcast. We want to get more and more people join on this broadcast and, and pray for Jill as well. And Jill, please, um, we are running out of time, and I'm just going to make this exception. So come over here, and as I said in the beginning of the show, you're going to pray for people. So pray for healing, deliverance, breakthrough. Here, over to you. 
Oh, Father God, I just thank you right now, God, that your love, Father, your mercy and your grace wants your people delivered and set free. Release your glory right now, Lord God. Release your glory of your love, the glory of your breakthrough, the glory, Father, of your heart that says, I love you, I want you, I'm here for you, and I'm bringing you through. Do not give up, do not get weary, because I'm here to lift you, and I'm here to bring you into this ancient mantle. I'm here to give you a holiness of heart. I'm here to give you grace and mercy, to forgive others that have wronged you, that have abandoned you, betrayed you. But it was for the greater glory and your greater good for what is coming. And so I release that right now, Lord God. I release the fire, the fire on their hearts to awaken them and to breathe the breath of God, to bring life, to bring rivers out of their belly shall flow rivers. Lord, I release the rivers to activate the rivers of holiness, the river of deliverance, the rivers inside of them, Lord God, that they will have a river to break out, to break through and to go through, Father God, right now for themselves first. And then that um, ancient well, Lord God, we command anything that's dammed up, broken up, we command it to be loosed in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that they're coming into their new identity their new destiny, authority, but also, Lord, let them seek your face for you're jealous for them. You want them, Lord. You want to be one with them. Lord, you want to be the bride and the bridegroom, a father and a sonship. Lord God, like Jesus, Lord God, when you said, beloved, my beloved, am I well pleased? Let someone know that you're well pleased, Lord God, and that, God, that your portals open over them and the Holy Spirit's with them and you'll never leave them or forsake them, oh God. And we thank you, Lord God. There's joy coming in the morning. There's celebration. There's commissioning. There's electric joy that even struck me in the Holy of Holies, Lord, that healed me from cancer. That's another testimony. But I want to give you faith, my friends. I want to give you hope and expectation and confidence in your God. He is who he says he is, and he will do what he says he can do. And he will do it. And he's here to tell you that today. And I thank you and I praise you. Hallelujah. 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 And may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you and may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and may the Lord be gracious unto you, lift his countenance upon you and give you his shalom peace. And I, I have my shofar if I could blow my shofar. Come on, okay. go ahead. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The shofar is going to be blown. I want to give you the healing, a sound of deliverance, the sound of healing, the sound of breakthrough. The sound of awakening, the sound of repentance during this time before Rosh Hashanah, that he wants to transfer you, transform you, renew you, heal you, deliver you, and set you free. It's the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And the goodness of the Lord is his glory. All that he is, all that he brings, and all that he has. He wants you to hear and listen. And he has great things in store in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus, I pray and honor you, Lord, and worship you. Glorify your shin, da 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 ba 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 da shake it, da 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 ba da shin, da 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 ba da da shake it, da 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 ba da da shin, da da. Thank you, shin da da. Into the secret, secret place, call you up hither. He's waiting for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory unto you. Wow, you just refreshed my soul. And so many people that are watching right now, those who will watch later on, make sure you share. This is a very, very important broadcast. And I want you to let at least a million people know about this broadcast. You know why? Because I truly believe there is so many hearts that needs to be transformed at this moment. We are what we are doing for such a time like this. We need so many people give their hearts to Jesus Christ. Apostle Jill, thank you so much for being on the program. What an honor. You are a general in the army of the Lord, just so you know. And you are going to lead um, groups or groups.